Hey you, so on this video, how I would stack on a low budget or picking up gold and silver on a very low budget. I'm going to be doing another edition of this video. I've been asked a few times now if I could just do the video again, even though I've got a video like this out. But there's been a few new updates just in my own way or personal approach to picking up gold and silver. And a few suggestions others have made from the last video I've done that I'll be including in this video. So I'm going to be breaking into that. Apologies to for the long wait, guys. I know I've had a few people messaging me just where I've been and what's going on with the videos. It's been just real hectic. You know, it's that time of the year, seasonal for myself. And it's still very busy for me. But I know I haven't had a video out for a hot minute, so I'm just catching up now. But I'm going to try and get as many out this week as possible. Hopefully go for the usual amount. So... I'm going to be breaking into how I would or recommend my own personal thoughts and opinions here. It'd be fantastic if you've got anything or any approach or any advice to leave in the comments also. But what I'll do first before breaking into this is go over just a few things I think an individual should know or I would have loved to have known if you're just getting into stacking gold and silver and thinking about or purchasing or about picking it up because you know these are things that need to be taken into consideration since I've been buying gold and silver um, my, my thought process has changed how I approach picking it up has changed the entire market has changed so I think an individual could definitely benefit from knowing these things or you know go ahead moving forward or maybe not even attempt to move forward. So these are a few things that you should definitely know and that's out there in general. Now the first one would be not to even consider um, buying gold or silver if you're in debt. You know, that's good advice. So, you know, it's kind of advice you get from your parents or, you know, you tell somebody. But for me personally, I've gone into debt to make certain purchases. Now, mind you, they have been collector coins, not foundation. I'm going to be referring a lot more to foundation here. Won't break it down to the, to the minute detail, whether it should be, you know, weight or government. I've done videos like that in the past. But I would say with that piece of advice, you know, don't buy gold or silver if you're in debt or you have any debt, clear on your debt first. It's one of those things where it's easier said than done. And I say that because I know individuals whose entire life is built up on debt. And I mean very large amounts of debt. And they're getting by. You know, it's, it's a lot harder if they chose better life decisions or chose not to go down that route. I, I'm sure their life would be easier. But I think it's one of those things that's a lot easier said than done for some. And I'll say that because I, I, I know individuals and I've seen individuals who like to live a lie or just don't want to put it out there that they're in debt. So I would say definitely take that on board. But, you know, everyone's going to do whatever they want to do in the end of the day. But the advice is out there, but it, I don't think it stops individuals anyway. But, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is getting yourself into debt. If you have debt, of course, work on clearing that first. But you don't want to be getting yourself into debt. And that would lead me to the next one I'm about to say is that silver, especially, and gold are not investments. I've put in the past videos and I've had individuals recently comment on some of my older videos where I mentioned that's a great investment. And I've come to understand and no, it isn't. You know, it's not this buy today, shoot up tomorrow. I think people that done the metals, no justice there. It was Mr. Rich Dad and Mahoney and Co. Now, once again, I absolutely love these guys. But videos like 150K tomorrow, six digits, didn't do it no favors. Because these are the videos, if you go about looking or start getting into it, these are the videos individuals run into. I know more hands down individuals just off of YouTube in my personal life that got into this with that mindset and they're, they're, they're angry individuals. Now we've talked about the incredible Hulk stackers in the past, but if you come into it with a clear mindset that it's not an investment, of course there could be investment opportunities. And you know, I believe that to be the case, but I'm not going to push, you know, 10 today, a hundred tomorrow. I won't be doing that. And I think that the safest thing for an individual to do is also move on that mindset. It's technically your own personal savings account, a hedge against inflation, but that could also be questioned, you know, the value of the pound or the dollar was a tank and metal prices tank them, you know, where's your hedge? But some say that never happens, but we're living in funny times today. Anything is possible. So that's also one to take on board. But the best way to look at it is just your own personal savings account that has a pretty good track record of, you know, putting your money, keeping it out of paper, which can easily be manipulated. 
I'm not saying the physical can't now due to the paper market, but it's a lot more stable and secure than when you've got full control over it and your hands on it. So look at it like that, a savings account, your own personal savings account and a hedge against inflation. And then, you know, you shouldn't be running into no worries. If you're putting an investment potential or an investment at the top of your list, especially with silver, then, you know, we all know about the rude awakenings and that's one way to definitely look at it. And now, Another optional thing that should be put out there is should you dollar cost average now um, Individuals were bringing this up last time on the video I done now I personally have never dollar cost averaged You know when I purchased the bulk of my silver to start off with it was one big large buy It was a couple of monster box or monster box to test the waters as I was doing more research into it looking up into it I thought okay, I'm gonna go all in it was I was just fortunate at the time it was on a, a lower spot than we are now, a fair bit lower. Um, it could have been in 211 at the high, and I would have been one of those individuals stung. Now, that could be one of the downsides of dollar cost averaging, and this is going to be a uh, part of what I'm talking about when I'm talking on how to pick up or how I would go about purchasing gold and silver. But why I would say dollar cost averaging had no, that it's had no root in my game plan is that I purchased my metals. And I'm in a situation where when I purchase more metals, be it from a sale of a collector coin, I'll tend to wait for a better, for my better, um, lower spot price. But if need be, if something pops up and it comes along, my mentality is to buy it there and then. You know, I know it's a decent price for me, so I'm going to pick it straight up. I don't set out every month on the month to pick up a set amount, um, you know, religiously. You know, it's just like, it's not for me. But it has worked for some dollar pound cost averaging. Overall, you work it down. It helps if you purchase in highs. And then, you know, it can ease the burden if you keep on purchasing. It can bring the total cost of your average ounce count down. But for me, I like to really strike when the prices are low. And that's when some individuals may go in and get into debt, for instance, and then pay it off of the month that could have been a lot higher. Or, you know, just double the foot down or double down a lot harder when it's on whatever your low is. Another major thing here is my um, high for an individual just getting into stacking gold and silver is always gonna be your low, you know? So you have to figure out what is low and comfortable for yourself. Cause I could be saying, look, I'm waiting to pull my punches or pick my punches and wait for a nice favorable spot price for myself. But I'm gauging off what I've picked up in the past and where we are now. So for an individual just getting in, it's easy to listen to the chatter of individuals, but it's always good to pay close attention to where that individual is with their stack and even their finances. So I would say dollar cost averaging is not something I do. I always purchase when it's low. Some would consider now lowish at time of releasing this video. It's a fantastic time to strike and go in. So I would say buy it when you're most comfortable. But this is a video on individuals stacking on a budget. So we may not be as comfortable for that to happen. But dollar pound cost averaging is not something that I've personally done. I just pick up when it's convenient for me. If I have a load of cash coming in and, you know, I can break some off. A majority of the time it's from the sale of some collector pieces and I've got the profits there and then I go in from there. But I personally don't dollar cost average, but it could work for an individual. Um, I would say from there, it's that's the majority of the get out of the way is out of the way. Now, if you're going to be buying on a low budget, I will give a budget this time round, unlike the last video. And I'd say you want to be aiming for, uh, say a hundred pound, $120. If you can be doing that, $130, then you're good to go. That's the minimum. If you're going to be purchasing, you want to be able to pull out from your savings or your wage, and this is the absolute minimum. If you're not able to do that, or it's hurting you to do that, then I would say I don't think you should be stacking, as some have recommended in the past. Some have said, you know, maybe, I think I believe it was Luz and Louis, focus on putting some money into your education so it could help you at a later date to make more money or you're not in a situation you may be you know FOMO in to get into silver because you've heard it's going to be x y and z tomorrow like i mentioned it's that's not going to be the case if you have savings and you've not known what to do with it and you've seen what's going on with the savings accounts and banks and the likes of then gold and silver physical is a fantastic option to get into but if you are struggling and you can't make the minimum i'd say 100 pound 130 dollars 150 dollars 
then you shouldn't be doing it. If you can afford to break that off on the side, then here's how I would go about doing it. As you can see, I'm holding a one tenth ounce gold. Now, pickup is going to be different as opposed to my video also. I would aim it down to, when we're talking silver, you want to be aiming for a minimum of six ounces of silver a month. And I would alternate that with picking up gold once a month also. So I would say go one month gold and go one month silver. I'm going 50-50 all the way here. I've done videos in the past where you could say 70-30, but I think it's more important now to really mix them up. A lot of individuals are now currently saying got silver is the better purchase when you look at the gold to silver ratio. That's a big one you're hearing. I don't know if we're at 90 or 85 currently. Silver's the better purchase, you know, but whether they're a dealer or an individual that's really caught up in silver, you really need to analyze and look at it. I have a load of silver and wish in the beginning I would have done a 50-50 at minimum. Once again, my own personal thoughts and opinions. If you think otherwise, please, please leave that in the comment and let us know. But another one you're hearing now from a lot of the silver, you know, really hype only men would be, you know, JP Morgan stacking the stuff if it's so bad or it's not the best option. You know, why JP Morgan lapping it all up? And I, I the way I see that is if, if there's going to be any entity or institution that will not have a problem liquidating their silver at the drop of a dime or even causing the hype where people come running towards silver, it's going to be JP Morgan. I mean, they are crooks among crooks. If anything, them own in abundance now is scaring me. You know, these guys will have no problems whatsoever dumping their physical position in silver in the blink of an eye on individuals like us that are, you know, trying to protect ourselves. They, these are the manipulators. They, they are the master manipulators. So using them as an example, for me personally, I don't think it's always a good thing to do because if they're doing it, then you should be doing it. And you should be thinking the opposite. I now am a firm believer in holding 50-50. You know, you can favor one and each an individual favors either or the all but for me i think gold is just as important as silver you know silver has many many uses and you know it's definitely the sleeper but silver's been out forever since the beginning of time and it's always had its uses it's going to continue to get more uses but the price is what the price is so that is what it is you know gold will always be worth more than silver and who knows what's going to happen from there i'm still very heavy silver but if i was giving advice to anybody i would say focusing on both 50 50 and literally, if you can afford to get six ounces of silver a month, you're fantastic. And then I would say you want to be looking or aiming for the next month alternating. You're going to be spending a little bit more. You want to be aiming for a one tenth ounce minimum, if possible. Once again, if you're on a lower budget than that, we have uh, a 0.5. So, you know, half a gram. No one's saying you can't do that. I'm just giving a baseline of what I would recommend. If you're getting the one tenth, you're looking at a one at tenth ounce gold Britannia, gold Eagle, gold Maple, etc., etc. I'm always going to be more governmented. It's going to be a lot less hassle-free and a lot more liquid. It's definitely one you want to be looking at. Once again, you can go lower. A question I get all the time is individuals asking me quarter ounce gold or a sovereign. You know, you get more bang for your buck on a quarter ounce gold, whereas you do pay more on the quarter ounce gold and the sovereign weighs a little less. I believe it's 7.3 around there. And the quarter ounce is like 7.75 7 and it's more gold. But funnily enough, the sovereign, this focuses more on the European or the UK stack, if it can be appealing to anyone else, is a lot more liquid and desirable than a quarter ounce piece. And yes, you're assuming here we're talking a normal quarter ounce Britannia of course you may get more dependent but you know you may get a lot closer to spot or maybe a point above spot on the sovereign because it's just a lot more recognizable and a lot more liquid so just answering that question I'm realizing the sovereigns are the better bet but for individuals savvy individuals they may go with the quarter ounce personal preference once again if you're in a position where you could be picking up higher now more than a one tenth ounce these are fantastic options also the quarter ounce fractional gold but i would say by all means aim to get both into your stack where possible because they both play an important role and that is how i would be doing it if i was getting in now remember this is your savings account it's not the investment or the quick flip you know the pump and dump that has been called upon once upon a time this is something that you're going to be getting long with 
And here's the thing, if for any reason that doesn't come to be, you're going to be really happy that you also got into gold and not full silver because that's where a lot of the pain comes from and the resentment and the hate when individuals have to sell before they need to. So I would break this down one more time and say one month you're going to be looking at picking up a minimum of one tenth ounce of gold. You're going to be paying a little more that month. You could be paying anywhere of $150 to £130, doing this in pounds and dollars here. And then the next month, if you're able to pick up six ounces of silver, you're going to be paying a little less because that can eat the burden in the long run. So you're looking at about £100. Your silver, it's going to be your gold, silver maple leaves, your silver britannias, normal standard, your silver eagles. You'll be looking at about $130 there. So I would say giving it a baseline of $100 or £100 in the long run do you dollar cost average if one month you're coming to pick up and you realize it's a lot cheaper than it was last month you could do whatever it is you need to do whatever you know call upon maybe that credit or borrow some funds that month and pick up double and maybe use the same funds you would have purchased the next month to pay off whatever it was or however you turned to it or did increase and that could be an option but that's that's the model i'm giving there stacking on a low budget and the main quest the main thing here is to stack both that's where i am right now to focus on both and not just on one so i'm not favoring gold and i'm not favoring silver i think it's the safest and best approach because you never know what's going to happen at a later date but from my own personal experience i wish i would have done this starting off now i wish i would have got into both then so heavy silver over gold so i'm going to wrap this one up guys but it'd be fantastic to hear your thoughts on how you would stack on a budget or any tips and advice that you've got for an individual just getting in stacking on a budget so go ahead and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll catch you guys on the rebound